Hello, my friends. I mean you. Yes, you. Data of every description will pervade our consciousness. Holograms projected beneath our eyelids. Welcome to the DCC Museum. Hi, and welcome back at the museum. Today's video is about breadboards and training stools. A couple of years ago, we received a donation from DutchAudioClassics.nl. It's a DTT 1000. That is a training stool that was sent out to all manufacturers so that they would understand how a DCC player would work. And it's fully customizable and fully programmable. So with software, you would be able to have a complete DCC player with all kinds of ins and outputs that you could hook up to your computer so you can program things like your own boards, display, buttons, etc, etc. Prior to that, there was what we call a 350. We know this because we received this from Daniel Staudecker, a Tandy developer, and this was used to actually learn how to program a display and the operating buttons. This is a full player, this is a partial player, only the mechanism. But because we now have them both, we were able to determine what was wrong with them. We were not yet able to fix them, but in this video we're going to show you how far we are along. So here we have both units next to one another. With the arrival of the 350, we had a better shot of actually determining what was wrong with both units. As you have seen, the DDT-1000 gives an error like no deck detected. And we originally thought that the deck was the problem. The deck is similar than the one we have in the DCC-850, the prototype that we have from Philips. And the original plan was to switch this deck with the deck in the DCC 850. Although we were a little hesitative because we don't like to take the 850 apart more than we need to, um, we put it on the back burner and now with the arrival of the 350 we found out that these mechanisms are actually the same. This is just flat and this is put straight up. So what we did here, since the 350 limited as it is, it's fully functional, we swapped these decks and this deck in this machine gave the same message and this deck hooked up to this board would work. So now we would be able to exclude the fact that it's most likely the deck. We also found out that studying the front part of the brochure that we have that this board was missing, the audio board, which we would be able to replace by a 900 prototype that we still had still has the same board, so we put that in there, but we don't believe that the audio board is a part of the deck not being recognized because all of these functions 
the startup and the DAC controls are in this port. Some of these ICs are similar to these, so we have moved them over to see if it would make any difference. It did not, the error will stay. So we don't know what to do next at this moment. We don't have any service manual, we don't have any more details. There are quite a few jumpers that we don't know the meaning of, so it would be great if we could somehow get more information either the original leaflet that we have shown you that we only know it exists but we have no copy or a service manual or somebody who would have worked with a unit like this that would be a big help in order to try and restore this to full functioning order so the 350 that we have on the bench now is fully functional with its limited functions there is no audio connections to the pass board or whatsoever this is purely for programming through this port with software the controls and the display if we click play it would engage the um, reverse play would work wind works all the functions are uh, are there Daniel Staudecker might have still the software to hook up the port to a Windows or other computer to see what we could do to reverse engineer the programming. But this was the early 91 unit that would be sent out to developers like Tandy or Machusta. So this is fully functional and it did help a lot with the troubleshooting on the DTT 1000. Hope you enjoyed this video. See you next time.